shit, she smells like heaven Then best friend sends me real life And oh my god, I like her Yeah, I heard you like her Yo, what is poppin' people, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Out of Order. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, guys, I'll be showing you three easy tips to improve your edit slash montage. And if you're new to the channel, guys, I make videos about After Effects, editing, VFX, and all sorts of other cool stuff. So be sure to subscribe for that. And without further ado, guys, let's get right into the video. So this is the same edit I had in the preview of the video. As you guys can see, it's the exact same edit. The only difference is I don't have RSMB enabled on this edit. So starting off with tip number one guys which I think is the easiest and most important thing to do and that is to add radial blur and directional blurs on sharp transitions so you guys might think you know oh if you do pan crop you know if you smooth it out and like zoom in you know sw swish pan stuff like that you guys might think RSMB might take care of the rest for that but actually if you add radial blurs on each transition like I have here for example it looks a million times better now you don't have to do this on every transition however for the sharp transition transitions are like the ones with a lot of impact just adding a radial blur does so much for it so as you guys can see here I have a radial blur here I changed the position just a slight bit um, I changed it from spin to zoom and I keyframed it here so it starts off at zero then it goes to 48 and then it goes back to zero I didn't do any easing or anything with the graph editor but uh, as you guys can see it looks a lot better with this so without it this is what it looks like this is without it and then this is with it and honestly, this paired with RSMB just makes the edit feel so much smoother. Same goes for directional blurs. I recommend adding directional blurs as well and keyframing them too. So as you can see, I did the same thing with the keyframe. I had to start at zero, then it goes to about 30 to 40, and then it goes back to zero. And I put this on the transitions that are kind of sharp, but as you guys can see, it just looks so much better with it. So this is without it, this is without, and then this is with it. As you can see, I don't know, I don't know if you guys notice it, but when you play the edit out entirely, it looks so much better. Now, tip number two, which I've mentioned in previous videos, is you want to change your shake settings for each different shot. Now, you don't have to change every setting. However, I don't recommend using the same shake twice. So as you guys can see here, I changed the seed. As you can see, the seed's at zero. The second shot the seed is at it's a different value and then the third shot the seed is still a different value as well so i recommend making sure that for your shakes you have the seed be different on each one now if you're wondering why you should do this it's because if you don't the shake will be the same for each shot now some people will notice this and it'll get super repetitive throughout the edit now for tip number three you don't want to use the same impact effect twice so as you guys can see here i have a few impact effects this impact effect as you guys can see what i did was i got a z depth map so that's this right here as you guys can see there's a z depth map and then i added monochrome on there so that's what i did for the very first impact the very first impact uses monochrome the second impact is a different effect uh it's um exposure with the offset and exposure keyframe so i just got the key from right here i think i eased the graph like this or so so that's what I did for impact number two. Now impact number three is a little bit different as well. As you can see, impact number three, I use Glowfy and Vignette. So what, what these two do combined is the Vignette basically has it dark all around the edges and then the Glowfy just adds that little overlay on top. So basically for tip number three, don't use the same impact effect two times in a row. You can use them throughout the edit, like if you start running out of ideas for effects, you can use the same impact you used earlier. Just don't put them one after another. And that about wraps up the video guys. Those are three simple things that'll make your edit a lot better. So the first thing obviously is the borders. You want the radio borders, directional borders. Second thing, you wanna change your shake settings. And the last thing, you don't wanna use the same impact twice twice in a row but other than that guys leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new guys i make videos and tutorials about after effects and all sorts of other cool stuff so be sure to subscribe for that thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video guys peace